Hello everyone, welcome to the 8th episode of FPJ Limerick. In this episode, we will talk about the Coco TB to make Python based test bench. As usual, the script of this episode has already been posted online at fpj.posturing.com. fpj.posturing.com, this is our companion blog. And to show why we choose Coco TB for verification, let's visit other possible options for verification. The first one is the old fashioned way where um, people use either Verilog or VHDL to make both design and verification. And as of today, a lot of companies still do things like this. However, as the Verilog or VHDL lacks the feature offered by high level programming language, this method becomes very inflexible, verbose, and unproductive. So now comes the, the second method where um, the test bench is done by um, a dedicated HVL language, such as Vera E, or maybe even maybe Tickle. So this is better, um, as those HVL has better um, capabilities for verification. But as things progress, it is now replaced replaced by a system Verilog with a unified HVL HDL approach. And for this, the H system um, this um, approach with system Verilog, it also offers um, like assertion based verification ABV. So this is good, and it is the mainstream approach that is being used by the industry today. Although System, System Verilog did a good job introducing high-level programming language features, such as um, object-oriented syntax, it is still considered too verbose and low-level comparing to newer programming languages like Python. Thus comes um, the CocoTB, and our bet is on CocoTB for the near future because we found that um, CocoTB is more convenient um, and easier to use than the system Verilog when it comes to verification. So let's take a look. CocoTB stands for Co-Routine Co-Simulation Test Bench. It is a Python-based verification framework, and practically it can be a good supplement to Spinal HDL. As shown in this di diagram, the CocoTB runs Python over VPL or FL interface to communicate with the simulate and exercise the DUT. If the DUT is written in Verilog, the VPI interface is used. Here VPI stands for a Verilog procedure interface. If the DUT is written in VHDL, FLI interface is used. FLI stands for a foreign language interface, which is a standard developed by Mental Graphics. So if you use um, VHDL to uh, run things uh, for, uh, in the Coco TB, probably, uh, and if you, you need, uh, probably you need a uh, Costa sim or model sim as a simulate because um, those are the simulate offered by Mental Graphics. I could be wrong, could probably other um, simulator, they, they might use something called a, um, VHPI something, uh, I forgot, but yeah, for Costa, it's, it's, I think it's um, FAI. Okay, let's take a look at how we set up the, uh, the Coco TB. Um, we use, uh, the platform we use will be um, WSL, which is Windows Subsystems for Linux. I think at the end of um, episode three, the part to sub, uh, set up the WSL has already been introduced. I think um, if we take a look in at the end of episode three, where we say um, set up for Linux, and here's the here is uh, the instructions, and you can also look at um, episode three on YouTube. But basically, what it means is I think we use Ubuntu twenty point. 04 is um, our Linux distro uh, and also 
the we will run a script called WSL underscore setup dot sh. Yeah, this is the script to run, and let's take a look at what it looks like. So this script will install all the necessary um, packages and the uh, and um, Ubuntu twenty point oh four, and and at the end of it, it will try to install two simulators. One is the very late, the other is the the Questa. And those are the simulators we will use. And uh, the Variolate is an open source simulator that supports Verilog uh, or System Verilog. It will convert the VHDL or it will convert the Verilog or System Verilog into C++ code and then compile the C++ using GCC, which is kind of similar to um, to the Synopsis VC VCS, because uh, this RTL to C++ approach, the Variolate runs probably um. I feel, I feel like 5x faster than Quasta. However, the drawback of Verilate is that um, A, it does not support VHDL at this point, B, it does not support gate level simulation, and C, it does not support um, third party library. So because of, the, of those, um, those drawbacks, we also need a commercial simulate. Um, if third party IPs such as um, DDR, controller, uh, are involved, Fortunately, we can get a poor man's um, version of Quasta Sim from Intel website. You can see at the, um, the script that we're using at the end of it, we download something from Intel um, to get this Quasta, to get this um, poor man's version of Quasta. And to use this version of Quasta, we also need to apply um, for a fixed seat license. That is, I think it's free, um, but you can get the license from Intel Self Service License Center. I think the link is you can find the link um, on our companion blog. Uh, let's see. So, on uh, our companion blog, you can find the, the Intel li Self Service License Center here. From here, I think you can apply for a fixed seat license. However, here's the catch. Because we use um, uh, WSL, and when you apply for a license, usually you say, okay, you, the, the license is tied to a MAC address. But for WSL, the MAC address changes every time it reboots. I think they did this for um, security reasons. Uh, so fortunately, we can fix this by setting up a dummy MAC address to match the one used uh, by the license file in WSL. So when, we, when you apply for the license, you, you provide a MAC address. And then if that address changes, you, you, can, you can fix it by running this script. Basically, what it does is it just, uh, um, you, can, you need to change the address to match whatever you used in your license file, and this will create a dummy MAC address. So, so in that case, you can still load up the, the license to match this MAC address. And I think at the end of it, when you uh, finish the installation of the Costa Sim, you also need to set up an environment um, a variable called, uh, I think called LM, um, LM underscore license underscore file. You, you can look at the instructions from from Intel when you install the um, uh, the Costa. Okay, so that is for some logistic issues. Now let's take a look, see um, how we run the Coco TB, and uh, don't worry about uh, the details because we're gonna discuss all the details. The next episode.
Okay, see, let's see how we can run this. Basically, uh, we do something different. Um, traditionally, if you run Cocoa TB, you probably will need a make file. That's what they recommend on the official website. But I think um, for us, we choose a different approach. We will use um, Cocoa TB test um, and on top of um, TOX, which is a virtual environment. And we will get into details on, in next episode. But let's just see how we run it. Okay, uh, let's uh, check out. Okay, let's do this tag. I think it's this tag. This tag. Okay. And uh, let's open the WSL. Okay, let's do WSL. And let's make ourselves a pseudo user. Okay, so here's the um, the repo we just checked out. Let's go to Hello World test. Coco TB. Okay, now there are uh, two. As I said, we support um, two different kind of um, simulator. Let's see. Very late first. Um, all you have to do is just type in tox. I think the first time it make it might uh, take uh, a while because it will try to download all the packages um, from the internet and cr create um, the virtual environment. But next time it rains, it, it will be a lot faster. See the package we are downloading is. Um, CocoTB test, which we use um, to replace the make file, and also other things um, like NumPy for um, for number crunching, and the coverage which we will discuss later. And the, here you can see is the hello world. In the hello world, we will run um, three different parameters. Try to try diff uh, no three different frequency combination, and also we each time we will regenerate um the value log based on the um the spinal HDL. But if you all your code is already in value log, you don't have to do that. It's just a extra step if you use um spinal HDL to make sure it was generated with the correct parameters. I think now it's installing the um the packages and the test will start. So next time you don't have to go through this because um, all the packages will be saved in a local folder called .tox and next time it will already be downloaded. Okay, now it, the test start has got started. See, so generating regenerating um, the value log using SPT. Then it starts to run. Oh, it starts to co uh, compile actually. Uh, you do need to compile the um, the value log and it starts to simulate. So it's now still in the SBT. Now SBT is done. Now it's running the um, the value log, compiling, and now it starts to simulate.
Okay, that's good. Now it passed. And now you try a second um, param set of parameters. Now compile and run. And pass again. Now it's the third set of parameters. Notice it has different um, output clock frequency. Now it's all passed and it's done. So um, that this is for violate and the same thing for cluster. You can run that. But if you have trouble getting a license, as I said, you need to and I think go to script and look at the dummy address. Maybe you need to change that and then join it so you can set up the address to match your license file. And I think also let's look at, I think in probably you also need to set up um, an environment for let's see, um, test. If we're running Costa, the Costa is, um, let's see, here you see this LM license file. This is taken from the environment, so you you might need to point this one to um, to the license file you, you got received from Intel. Or if you, your company environment, you have already some commercial license, you can also should point this to your commercial license. And, you, and the, the talks, the virtual environment will take that um, from your um, local environment and, and run it. So I think that's all only to show you just um, get a feel of how to run the Coco TV. And we will get into um, the details for how to run a test bench in the next episode. Okay, let's see if there's anything left. Okay, this is um, the functional simulation that uh, uh, that is used by, actually it's general, it's, uh, it applies to both CocoaTB and the system library log. Um, basically, usually um, we need like a driver and a monitor, the driver gets the input and the monitor takes the output. And then there's something called a scoreboard, which is composed of a functional model and that checker. I think I already mentioned um, the dysfunctional simulation in earlier episodes, but uh, we will get into this with details as well in in the next episode. Let's see. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this is helpful to you, please uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. And bye-bye.